Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And today we're gonna take a look at dual amping. Now, dual amping has kind of become one of those um, guitar tone buzzwords, kind of like transparent overdrive and yada, yada, yada. And it's kind of been earmarked as a surefire way to get some great, excellent tones, whether you're going for this, you know, very wide stereo live thing or trying to copy like something you might have heard on a record. And of course, one of the really big gripes with something like the FM3 is it doesn't have a second amp block. I can't do dual amping with it. So we're going to take a look at how to recreate kind of the analog dual amping rig inside of the Axe FX3. And I'm going to show you how to pair that down to something a lot simpler, uh, save some CPU along the way, and how to kind of transfer these same ideas over to something like the FM3. So over here in this preset that I have called up, this is something like our typical um, dual amp if we were recreating you know, the, a real world pedal board and a dual amp sort of setup. I've got two drives that I'm gonna stack. I've got a delay and reverb. And just like in the real world, I'm gonna want to split from these stereo effects out to you know, this amplifier and this amplifier. Now the amplifiers that I have in question, I'm running a matchless D30 into some matchless cabs and I'm running a band commander into twin reverb cabs. I have the amp bypass mode set to mute so we can just hear what's going on. I'm gonna mute out the band commander and here's the D30. That's the bridge pickup of my Strandberg. Here's neck and middle. So some nice voxy style tones. Let's do the same thing over on the band commander again, bridge pickup and then neck and middle. So there's some Fender jangle and a little bit of scoop mid-range thing going on. Now, if you like the way that these amps and cabs sound, um, these are just pulled directly from my blocks library. You probably can't see all of this on the screen right now, but I promise there is a lot more. Uh, all these amps and cabs uh, are available on my website, you can download my block library for yourself. Just hit the link in the description box below. I did need to make one adjustment for doing this dual amp thing. Rather than hard panning my cabs left and right, I left them in center because I'm gonna do the panning later. So if we turn both of these amps on, Right now, as it sets, if you just drop everything in with some you know, pretty stock settings and everything, uh, and you have this sort of setup, this is not a stereo dual amp rig yet. I've got this sound, which is, I'm playing kind of light because it's actually kind of loud. Right now, this is summing both of my amp channels to mono in the output block. Now, I could, go over to the cab block and balance this one hard left and balance this one hard right. That's a method. And we can hear that stereo rip width that comes back. Now I've gone ahead and I set the, the balance, the individual block balance of each cabinet back to zero because here's another method that keeps things a little bit more simple. So if I go to the output block, our output block, all of our output blocks have, have individual row panning an individual row level. And then of course we have our scene levels, uh, which is great for some very clean, transparent boosting. I talk about that in another one of my videos. We're talking about dual amping and stereo today. So I'm gonna go back to the mixer and I am going to just adjust. We have row two, which is one amp, and then row four, which is my other amp. I'm just gonna hard pan these left and right. And I've gone ahead and I've done that on channel A here. Now don't sleep on the input and output blocks. These are kind of the uh, unsung heroes in the fractal universe. You also have four channels like most of your other blocks in here. And of course, as I mentioned, we've got the individual level control for leveling out certain aspects of our uh, preset and scene levels. Uh, these are really great tools inside of our units. So now row two and four are hard panned. <laughs> There's my bridge pickup, middle and neck. And another good uh, thing about using my block library, I have these amps pretty much dialed in at a very consistent volume, so I'm not hunting around for that volume. Uh, you can see my output meter in my block. Those amps are basically 
producing the same level. If you want to check that another way, on a Mac, hit Command L or Control L on PC, and you can bring up the preset leveling tool. This is basically the same thing, it's just removed from the output block so you can adjust it from another area. <laughs> If you want to find that another way, you can go up to Tools and hit Preset Leveling. So now I've got my amps taken care of, right? I'm doing stereo things. One amp is over here and the other amp is over there. So if I turn on my reverb, this is just stock settings. We get this sound. And then here is a delay. This is the stereo tape. Also at stock settings, left to right time ratio at 75%. So we can get that dotted eighth uh, quarter note thing happening and we get this sound. Do you hear the issue we have? Our effects aren't doing the stereo thing. So what's going on? Now, unlike, again, in the real world, they would already be doing the stereo thing when you just uh, hook the jacks into the left and right in the back and then go out to your amplifiers. But here's something to keep in mind when we look at the fractal grid and the cables. Every single cable and every single grid block is set up to already be stereo. So here's what I mean by this. Out of my output block, I'm sending a left-right signal all the way through this chain. And then when I get here, the, the left right signal, it's not going left up here and then right down here. I'm doing that from the output block. We already kind of talked about that. This is sending left and right up here and then copying left and right and going here. So all of our cable connections in the fractal ecosystem are stereo. So we need to keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the amp block where I do this split. Look, look what's going on. My input select is set to sum the left and right signal. And that's the left right signal coming out of this side of the reverb and then the other side of the reverb. So if I want to keep the dual amp stereo thing happening, I need to move some left and right to I just want the left side over here in this amplifier and then I want the right side over here in this amplifier. Now I've got this. <laughs> Now that's doing that stereo dual amping thing. Of course, one of the fun things with a dual amp setup is how drive interacts with different amplifiers. So I've got a king of tone that I'm gonna throw in here. Let me go to the bridge pickup. Here's clean. And here's the king of tone. And then here are stacked. This is stacked with a Timmy. And then we have that sound going on. Now, take a look at my CPU. I'm on the AxeFX3, non-turbo, but it's still an AxeFX3, which has a ton of processing power. I am utilizing about 65%. This preset, which I will have this preset up on my Patreon, along with the second one that I'm gonna show you. Try this with the FM9. This will either be close to running or won't be able to run because of CPU limits. You can go into the reverb and try to move the reverb down to economy. That might work and you can use this, but I don't have a lot of room for other effects. I can't probably do pitch blocks or other things happening in here. This is a pretty stripped down preset. It's really everything you need, but I don't have a lot of CPU room for other things. So is there are there a couple of more simple ways to actually run this dual amp setup? And to keep comparing apples to apples, I've copied this preset over to another location. We're gonna um, edit that one and then we can compare the two back to back. So here's my second preset. We're gonna take a look at what advantages we have in a digital environment like this. So we actually really don't need, I'm actually kind of inefficient with my cab blocks here. If we take a look, I've got the matchless over here in this side. I have the cabs three and four muted out. And then uh, I've got my uh, double verbs over here. Um, this is pretty inefficient. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this cab block one down. I'm gonna connect this together. Let's get rid of this guy, we don't need him. And now I'm gonna turn this cab block into a stereo cab block. So again, input mode, not just left. I don't want to sum anything. I wanna go stereo. Now my labels have changed. So I've got 
cab one left, cab two right, cab three left, and cab four right. So I need to move a couple things around. Let's put on my matchless again, still going left. This is factory bank two and 76. I'm just going to copy this stuff over. Now let's get my twin reverb, which I think was 966, if I remember correctly, but in factory bank one, there it is. And then factory bank one, 1005 from what I remember. And there's my other one. And I'm going to also go ahead and hard pan everything again. So right left and right, because that's gonna affect the output. So this is the input, the input is stereo, but I don't wanna mix all of these IRs together. I want to keep these IRs in a separate stereo path. So I'm still moving this IR just to the left, moving this IR to the right, and so on and so forth. Now I'm not quite done yet, because although I've already set the cab to stereo, the output of my amps is not set to either the left side or the right side. The input is, but not the output. So I'm getting the input from the reverb and delay on the left and then on the right over here. Now I need to adjust the output to keep things in their own separate stereo path. D30 all the way left, and then the band commander all the way right. And now I've got dual amps, one cabinet block. <laughs> And that can save a little bit of that CPU there as well. Let's go ahead and compare this to the other preset. This should be exactly the same. Here's stacked. And then if we go back to the other one, here's clean. And stacked overdrives. And like I said, that sounds the same. It, everything should be the same. It is the same, but we still want to double check, right? Now here's another method, and this is something that um, if you're on the FM3, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. So probably more important than anything, especially in this digital environment, the IRs are probably gonna be our biggest tone shaper. So it's actually perfectly reasonable to only use one amp block and just use a stereo cab to do this sort of dual amping thing. This will probably sound a little bit different, but is it gonna be a lot different? Let's find out. So I'm gonna delete this amp block. We're gonna get rid of the band commander. I'm just gonna use the D30 and let's connect this back up to the cab. And I'm gonna move the amp block down the center again. And then I'm gonna move this back to the left side. That'll be just fine. And I also need to move my input select on the amp to some left and right. So now what you'll hear, because I'm summing everything back left and right, my reverb and delay is gonna be summed into mono. So I can't utilize these guys before the amp anymore. So now I move the amp and cab to before the delay. I still have the same delay settings, the same reverb settings. And this will probably change a little bit as far as sound goes because I'm running these after. They're gonna compress less. Uh, into the amplifier, and now the amplifier is summed left and right. Let's move the balance back to zero. And then now in the cab here, I moved everything again back to just the left side. I've got the matchless cab hard panned to the left and the second matchless cab over to the left, and then the twin reverb cab over to the right and to the right. And now this should get us back to stereo. Let's just bypass these and listen to this. And then here we have our reverb delay. Now I'm gonna bypass these again and I just want you to listen to the individual IRs here for a second. Of course you can go and hunt down, you know, any one of the 2000 cabs in here, but let me just solo out. Here's the the match the matchless cab, right? kind of doing that voxy thing. Here is one of the double reverb, or the twin reverb cabs. Even though I'm using the matchless amplifier, the speakers give this a Fender quality. It's doing a little bit of that low end and high end thing. Let's listen to the 421. Let me mute this out. If I play them together, That's kind of in the realm of Fender-like. And then again, here's both the matchless. So there's a perfectly reasonable case 
for instead of dual amping uh, and using two amp blocks, splitting your IRs. <laughs> And just to kind of make double sure, um, since I'm only using row three now, row three is still unaffected in the output panning. I just wanted to make that clear. So now let's bring back, uh, bring our effects back in the, the dual delay and the South Church reverb. And let's listen to these, to both these presets back to back and use your ears. Is it going to be worth it to use both of the amplifiers or you can you get away with one amp and just split your IRs? I think the case can be made for either of those, but listen and comment below and tell me what you think. Here we go. Here's clean. <laughs> That one is a little bit brighter. Let's hit the king of tone on the analog one. Here's the drives stacked on the digital. So there is a difference. I'm not going to den deny that. Is it a huge difference? That'll be for you to decide. I will pop both of these presets up on my Patreon. That'll be linked below. I hope you found this interesting and educational. My name is Matthew Dale. Play better, sound great, and understand more. And I'll see you in the next video.